Ministry of Job is a Karite, Adamite, Noahite faith. Job is um, from the land of Uz, and Uz is of Aram, of Shem. And um, I'll just give the exact, exactness of a genealogy as far as I can tell. Genesis ten verse twenty one. To Shem also the father of all the children of Eba, the older brother of Japheth, children born, the descendants of Shem, Elam, Asher, Athaxad, Lud, and Aram, from whom the man made people come. The descendants of Ram, Az, or sometimes pronounced as Uz, Hal, Gefer, and Mash. So it's uh, these are the, the nations where which the world, was, the world was divided after the flood, and we have the land of Uz in the beginning of the Book of Job, the land of Uz. So it's presumably it would would presumably be the land of Uz from which the world was divided, as shown in Genesis chapter ten. So Job was from the land of Uz. Now that doesn't guarantee that he's an Uzite, but it's a basic assumption. And um, so being from the land of Uz, he's Aramaic, or of the Ar Aramaic people, and uh, of Shem, so he's of the Semitic people who are of sons of Shem, and that's Noahide people. So he's Aramaic, which is part of the Semitic peoples, and of Noah. So, essentially, um, it, it, it is said that the language style of the book of Job is um, different to the other Hebrew of the Bible and that um, it appears that it might have been written in another language originally, so that it, it quite potentially originates from the actual Aramaic people of Uz, of, or of Uz. So, um, that would make it, technically it would make it a Noahide book in the Bible. Um, it's not, um, it's the land of Uz, so it is classified as a Noahide book. Uh, the covenant, the covenant of focus for the book of Job, the covenant which applies to Job, be it poetry or not, a poetic, poetical encounter or an actual somewhat re, re, relaying of an actual event to some degree, whatever it is, the, uh, the character is, by the looks of it, is, is a Noahide in terms of his covenantal status, and it's potentially from the Noahide community, for want of a better word. Now, I don't think that, we, we know as Noahides that they didn't necessarily use the term Noahide back then. We know that much, but uh, Noahide denotes that it's it's the, the covenant sort of faith of the Rainbow Covenant. And uh, technically, um, uh, at that time, in, in, in the old olden times, um, way back in the, the beginning of things, we, we don't know exactly when Job was written, but... Uh, the land, it's still known as the land of Uz, or the land of Uz, and, um, it's, uh, we, we don't have exact dating for sure, but it's, it's, it's early, we're probably sure of, it's, it's not, it's probably pre, pre, um, monarchical, before Israel's monarchy, but not necessarily, um, we don't. I don't think we really know for sure what the time frame, but it was still in a time where uh, that land existed, and it's I'm not aware of it being in existence anymore. It's known as the land of us, but it's an old book, and um, it was probably at a time when maybe Melchizedek. Was, was a known thing, Melchizedek himself being an Amorite of harm, 
gets no sun harm Pam. and um, he was a priest of God at Salem was Melchizedek it was essentially a Noahide priest so yeah it's not necessarily the idea that they were Noahides but what I'm driving at is that there was still some faith in the Lord God Almighty in that Middle Eastern area going on. Job knew about the Lord God. The land of Uz, the Aramaic people, they knew about the Lord God. They knew about him and they hadn't quite forgotten him. They hadn't forgotten him yet. It hadn't really quite turned to idolatry completely anyway. There might have been idolatry in the land of Uz, we don't really know. Perhaps the archaeology reveals something, I don't know for sure. But um, the Lord wasn't yet forgotten at that time. God was a, a living thing in what was the communities of the Table of Nations, I guess. And the Lord was still a reality. Because you would imagine Noah would have passed on the faith. Because he lived for a fair while after the flood, would have passed on the faith for a while. What, what is possibly an indicator that it's, that it's possibly pre-Abrahamic is that um, it's, it's only a vague possibility that this is a, a valid enough interpretation. Um, but um, I don't know, I mean, or contemporary with Abraham. Abraham's father Terah was an idolater, it says in Joshua 24. Now, Abram, um, was, idolatry was around, it was happening. Well, Melchizedek obviously knew the Lord to some degree because he was a priest of God Most High. So, um, it seems to be Job, seems to be contemporary of that era to some degree. It's an older thing where the Lord was known. But what we generally know in the culture is that as time passes by, all that are really still keeping the faith appear to be the Israelite people, most of the world is sent to idolatry. Um, we see in the Native American cultures notions of the Great Spirit. And to some degree, God is probably known in mankind. But it had been forgotten that people turned to false religion and idolatry, and they, to some degree, they'd forgotten the Lord. So this was, the book of Job was probably at a time when knowledge of God was still around. Idolatry had come in, but knowledge of God in the community, and it was an Aramaic community, which was Semitic people, which to some degree were keeping the faith. Um, so, knowledge of the Lord God was still around. Now, because it's the land of us, uh, it comes under the covenantal status of the Noahide community, or the community who believe in, in God, and uh, ha have knowledge of God, and uh, Officially, it's um, it's proper knowledge of God because it's in the Bible. It's presented as the Lord God Almighty, and um, it comes under the status of of mankind, of Noahide mankind, Adamite Noahide mankind's writings. It appears to have originated in the Shemitic people of Aram, in the land of us. So it's it's a Noahide book. Um, it's not really, by the looks of it, a Jewish book. So, because it is scripture, what we've received as a Bible, because it's not really a Jewish book or that we're aware of, it's no high scripture. It might not necessarily even apply to Judaism. I think. Jews probably, if you observe anything in the book of Job, if I mean, do you necessarily observe all the tenets of the Tanakh anyway? I mean, it's, uh, are the Proverbs laws of Solomon which must be followed? You know, I mean, I'm not sure if that's how the faith is interpreted. It's probably just guidance when it comes right down to it. You must apply this wisdom, says Solomon, otherwise into hell you go. Arrgh! I don't think it's quite like that, every book of the Bible, I mean. 
it's spiritual material to guide. But Job is not, I suppose, if it really is from the land of Uz, then it's not really part of Judaism, is it? I mean, it's a component of the Jewish Bible, but it's it's part of Noahidism, it's part of the, the Noahide covenant. So, what I'm driving at is the book of Job is a Karite, because it's in the Tanakh, it's a Karite Adamite Noahide or Karite Noahide book. So, um,. Yeah. Now, its applicability, um, it's been preserved in the Tanakh, and uh, which is the Hebrew Bible, which Christians call the Old Testament, and, well, we receive that. Uh, people who believe and who buy the Bible and, in the end, come into no Um we accept the Bible. We accept the Jewish Bible as a guidebook or as the rules for the Noahide section for Noahides. Now, it is, it's Uz, so it's an Uzite book. Now, there are no specifications in the book of Job for who this morality play applies to or who should take knowledge from. It's like, such as such as the lesson of Job to you Aram or to you children of Shem or to you people of us or to you Noahide mankind or children of Noah it doesn't direct it to anyone in particular it's a morality tale for want of a better word um, which is just what it is it's, uh, you know it's, it's just in there in the Bible and um, it's not directed as knowledge which no high mankind must learn, you know, we're not commanded or asked to obey anything in this scripture, and um, it is knowledge which pertains to the Azite community and the Azite culture. But it is Noahide as well. Now, um, what can we really say about that? In the end, I suppose, if God is the author of his word, or God's arranged to some degree, then it's been placed in the Hebrew Bible, and generally, as far as I understand it, I, I'm not 100% sure what the Karai Jews say about reading the Bible, but generally I think they, they softly sort of encourage that mankind probably should read the scriptures, I suppose. Orthodox Jews generally do recommend that you, uh, in the Noahide books, they do recommend that if you're going to be a Noahide, if, if you're connected to this and uh, you're going to actually observe the, the, the Noahide faith, then reading the Hebrew Bible is, is part of it. And once down in Melbourne, there was uh, June Cantrell, who's a, a Noahide friend of mine, I she might be deceased now, I don't really know. She was oldish when I met her. That was, oh gosh, 20 years ago nearly now. But um, she once commented that Shimon Cohen, who's the Noahide rabbi down in Melbourne, who I've met, who incidentally is the son of Zelman Cohen, a former governor general of Australia, um, he once mentioned that, I um, can't remember the exact words, but she relayed that he mentioned that this is a a Noahide book. This is this is for Noahides. So, um, because it's in the Hebrew Bible, and well, generally we that's what we follow, isn't it, current Noahides? I mean, and I'll stop there, and I'll, I'll go into um, a new point, but I'll come back to what I'm saying. I mean. God does have a covenant with mankind. And God has a covenant with Abraham and his children and Israel from Moses' generation on and his people. Now, in the Talmud, they, they sort of do take it in Talmudic faith to promote the faith to mankind to a degree. They sort of technically do say in Sanhedrin, promote the Noahid laws. So, um, so they do sort of technically in Judaism promote Torah faith to mankind. They don't really shove it down your throat from my experiences, but they do 
website promote that. Um, but in the Tanakh, when it comes right down to it as a car ride, they're sort of, they're not really, I mean, it says in Isaiah, they're a covenant people to the Gentiles to sort of show the law at me. But they're not really any official body with regulations for teaching mankind Torah. It's not really officially sanctioned in the Tanakh. And when it comes right down to it, I'm pretty sure that Pharisees, personally, I, I'm sure that the Pharisees developed the Mishnah and the, the Talmud, and it's just their ideas what they think. It's not really an oral law of Moses. So on that point, what it says in the Tanakh about Israel teaching mankind is there's no real regulations. There's no the Sanhedrin or, or whatever or, or the priesthood has not been appointed to teach mankind the Noahide Covenant. Nobody has. I'm a car in Noahide because I've I've found the faith and I've come into it and God has actually talked to me in a waking dream a few times and um, I've come into the faith but I don't really have a commission to teach this to mankind. God hasn't given me a Noahide commission to go off and convert people to the covenant which we're supposed to follow. There's no official body of Noahide, is there? There's no official body is what I'm saying. There's no, no, no thing established as a Noahide priest or, or what have you, a Noahide institution or society which is officially established historically with biblical evidence or some other, even other evidence which has the authority to go off and teach the covenant to mankind. No one's officially appointed to do that. There's, there's no Noah high priest in the world. It ain't there. Now, um, Melchizedek was an example. So, there's no appointing body. In the Christian religions, they they authorize themselves and appoint their pastors and so forth. But I don't have a divine mandate to teach no ideas. All you can really say for someone who comes into biblical no is that I suppose as part of the biblical no community or current no community is that. There's a few of us now, and as it emerges, I mean, it's just, I suppose, whatever we recognise as being. I think if I was to make a judgement, it's just what's what's learned enough. Someone who's learned enough in the in the early parts of the Bible, early Genesis especially, someone who has a lot of experience about Genesis 1 to Genesis 11, for want of a better word. You're going to have to know the rest of the Hebrew Bible, obviously. You're going to have to have read it, but you're going to have to be pretty strong in those early, early chapters. And all I can say is that someone who's very well experienced on the Noahide faith, for want of a better word, the more scripture you've taken in and learned, God probably ex probably extends you a degree of authority or permission or what, it, what have you to communicate the covenant. No one's really appointed. No one really has a sanction to say, this is no idolism, you've got to follow it. There is an unofficial priesthood, nothing's been decided, nothing's been done. If we start, if people start coming into the idea and a community sort of comes in, then we probably have some degree of right to sort of appoint a, some sort of body ourselves as current no idols. We can probably get together as a community online and maybe, you know, discuss what we think No Heights should be about. One of my sermons is that Kara No Heights are the living community of living continuity of the ancient No Heights community today. We, we've picked up a chain and we're, we're walking on with the covenant. And because there's history in the, the early genesis of Adam through to Noah, we can record our history and go on with a, a religious community which the holy people of that early period had to some degree. So we can continue on. 
So if if and that if people come into it, we can sort of um, probably something will form naturally enough in time. And I, I suppose you know if God really is in charge and answers our prayers and you know I mean works in the Karanai community, he'll probably just use use the community and its common sense to get something sort of officially sort of done sort of. Well, the body which does the work, or what, what have you, you know, whatever gets done, gets done. In the end. Um, so now, having made that point, there's not really an official body of Karanoidism to teach the faith. When we get to the Book of Job, which is Karanoite theology, in those days people knew the Lord. Some some people knew the Lord, it, God was still alive in the community and Job was replete full of spiritual lessons and they, they had knowledge of God and there's probably more in the Azai culture than is just in the book of Job there was probably more knowledge which is lost to us these days but um, ministry of Job is because there's no official body which regulates this for mankind, there's no official judgment to say that a member of mankind can teach it or can't teach it. There's no one to really say or to give a judgment. But it's in the Bible, and that seems to be received by mankind as the book from God. So I guess all, all I can really say is that if someone's learned enough in the Scriptures, and prays to God enough and becomes sanctified and holy enough, then there's the degree to which they've taken in knowledge of God, I pray, perhaps is the degree to which they can teach that knowledge. So ministry of Job essentially is it's no height as I established, and um, with no one really to say that it can't be done, and with perhaps as a Noahide knowing that this is a Noahide book, uh, perhaps it's something which, in the end, perhaps it should be done. Um, there isn't really any other community of Noahidism that I'm aware of which is teaching it as a, as a ministry book. Um, the Talmudic Noahides mostly they just follow the seven laws of Noah and um, they study the Bible in general, I think. But, uh, they do know about Job being relevant sort of stuff to know mind. So, um, all that said, this video is, um, you know, um, understanding Job, the, the authority of the book of Job or some sort of similar title. And, um, yeah, um, just with all that discussion, that's sort of where I'm coming from with the ministry of Job is that uh, it is a no hide book cut a long short thought or to sum up and um, in its origin it appears to be a Noahide character in a Noahide book so because of that it's appropriate enough for a Noahide community in this 21st century of the common era to teach the book of Job as not really law or regulation but I suppose spirituality or morali uh, morality teachings which will, can be communicated to a Noahi community for their education and spiritual nourishment and uplifting. I think that about sums it up.